And a very warm welcome to Middle East Matters. I'm Sanam Chantier. Coming up on this week's show, Arab women fighters on the front lines beating back the Islamic State group in Syria. A historic church reopens in Israel two years after an arson attack by Jewish extremists. Plus, Mr. Erbil, we bring you the well-groomed hipsters behind Iraq's first gentleman's club. Over the years, female Kurdish fighters have been taking up arms in Syria to rebuild and reclaim their lives. And we've heard hundreds of accounts of them battling the Islamic State group. What we don't often hear about is Arab women who are joining the fight. But to get there, they have a major obstacle, and that is their families. Josh Vardy has the story. Gearing up for war has become a daily routine now for Doza Jihan. This 21-year-old has joined up with the Syrian Democratic Forces, a mixed religion coalition of rebel fighters. Doza is currently fighting the Islamic State group to the northeast of Raqqa. Kurdish women have long been on the front line of the Syrian conflict, but Doza is Arab. In order to fight, she, like other Arabic women, has had to stand up against tradition and go against the wishes of her family. At the start, the idea was difficult to accept, especially in Syrian society. It was difficult for them to accept that a woman can fight in a place like that. But if people come and see what's going on, this way of thinking will change. Those are not the only Arab women to fight in this unit. Heavy joined the Syrian Democratic Forces in 2015 and since has been using a Kurdish nickname. She says she wants to free her country from the jihadists and fight also for equality of the sexes. My objective is to liberate all the women who live under the oppression of the Islamic State group, but also the women of our society, who don't have their own say in things. If men have the right to take part in society, then women should also have this right. The Kurds see men and women as equal, including on the battlefield. In Syria, women represent around 40 percent of the Kurdish troops fighting there, a fact that's made Arab women with feminist ideals take notice. However, according to this Kurdish spokesperson, recent major victories against the Islamic State organization have also led more women to join the ranks of the Syrian Democratic Forces. There are a thousand women who recently joined our fighters. We want to establish a strong organization. We want a large group of Arab women among the Syrian Democratic Forces so they can represent all Arab women. Kurdish and Arab fighters united on the battlefield and determined to win. According to them, to be a woman even represents an advantage to humiliate the jihadists. They say the Islamic State fighters believe they won't reach paradise if they're killed by a woman. A church in northern Israel has reopened almost two years after an arson attack by Jewish extremists. Three men were indicted for the attack in 2015 in what was then termed a hate crime against the country's minority community. Here's Laurent Bergstecker with more on that story. One by one, these worshippers are welcomed back into this Roman Catholic church in northern Israel. Among them, Christian dignitaries, international donors, and the country's president. The reopening comes after eight months of renovation at a cost of around one million euros. The state of Israel is committed, deeply committed, to the freedom of religion and of worship for all religious and believers. In June 2015, the atrium and the entrance to the church were ravaged by flames after an arson attack by Jewish extremists. The case made international headlines. For many Christians, this was where Jesus performed the miracle of the loaves and fishes. We are talking about the mixed feelings. On one hand, we are happy because of this event, because we are opening a new page. Uh, on the other hand, we are sad because this event shouldn't take place, because this event is taking place after uh, what uh, happened here in terms of arson, which is practically a hate crime directed against uh, Christians. Three Jewish extremists have been indicted for the crime, but have yet to be sentenced. Similar attacks against Christian and Muslim holy sites have multiplied in Israel in recent years. To Iraq now, where nine new camps for the displaced are currently under construction. 
They will house thousands of families expected to flee Mosul as the battle to liberate the city from the Islamic State group enters a critical phase. Sharon Gaffney brings you the details. From the dry, arid plains of the Iraqi highlands, a refuge for the displaced. Construction workers are building a camp for those fleeing war-torn Mosul. New lives will also be built here. Thousands of families are expected to leave Mosul in the coming months as the battle for control of the city intensifies. The camp is being built in Salamia, about 25 kilometres south of Mosul. Up to 7,000 people will make their homes here. This project is one of several that are being built to host the people who are expected to be displaced from western Mosul. Iraqi security forces have already reclaimed the eastern half of the city from the so-called Islamic State militant group as part of an offensive that began last October. The UN warns that life has become unbearable for many of those still living in Mosul, an estimated 750,000 people. With water and electricity outages commonplace, families also struggle to afford food and basic supplies. For many, fleeing their homes is the only option. The area is 210,000 square meters, and we're planning to build 1,400 tents here to accommodate displaced people. Camps like these are already accommodating more than 160,000 refugees, but that number is expected to rise dramatically as the conflict in northern Iraq continues. Now we move to Erbil, the capital of Iraqi Kurdistan, often making headlines for being the backdrop to battles against Islamic State militants. This time, the city is in the spotlight for a group of men with a difference. They are Mr. Erbil, the country's first gentleman's club, well-groomed hipsters with a social message. And I'm joined by one of the co-founders, Omar Nihad from Erbil. Omar, thanks for speaking to France 24. Can you tell us what was the idea behind this group? The idea of Mr. Ali is to bring together a group of gentlemen from Kurdistan that share the common mutual interest in designing and styling their own fashion, and at the same time, uh, remaining eager and passionate about in bringing an effective positive change in our society. Now, you've also said that you have a social message. Yes, that's right. We want to not only bring the attention the necessity of women's rights, the protection of our environment and our falling economy, but also to figure out ways to resolve these, these issues. Uh, and bear in mind, during this time, we had many obstacles and we, we, we were determined to bring our, uh, our ideas into a reality. So against all the, despite all the obstacles, uh, we, we decided to bring this idea into life. How did you do that? Well, uh, we, we did a lot of gatherings among us. We did a lot of activities uh, regarding the women issue. We, on our Facebook and uh, Instagram page, we try to show our support to our ladies who are active in our community, who are active in achieving their own personal goals, whether producing a local good or working toward women's rights. What kind of reactions are you getting in Iraqi Kurdistan, especially from those that, that are more conservative? Uh, when we first did that, we, we, we received negative and uh, positive feedbacks. But the, right now, when, uh, when all the media are talking about us and when we go viral, uh, people, we, we kind of have a reputation in our society. People are talking about us. Uh, pe people are consulting with us. Uh, the reaction, especially from older people, when we wear Kurdish clothes, they're trying to help us in better dress ourselves. And you have more than 50,000 fans on social media. You're getting a lot of attention from international media. What's next for Mr. Erbil? We're trying to uh, hold seminars regarding uh, the pollution of our environment. Uh, we're trying to raise awareness uh, to our youth that it, they have to act responsibly toward environment. And also we're trying to work uh, closely with the local tailors in designing and uh, uh, designing and styling our own fashion. Uh, this way we can give them the businesses and also be creative in designing our own fashion here in Kurdistan. 
So it seems like there's a lot more in the pipeline for this gentleman's club. Omer Nihad, thank you very much for speaking to us from Erbil. We leave you now with some images for these young fashion conscious Kurds hoping to change the way people perceive their region. Thank you for watching Middle East Matters. Thank you.